Hey everybody, I have a video here for you today, and I am working on a video about a mound site down in Oklahoma, but that is just going to take me a little more time. That's going to be one of my more extensive videos coming from ancient America, but I wanted to talk about one today because this was brought to my attention um, over the past few weeks, and then I got a more detailed message, and I had actually looked at this about three or four weeks ago. And I thought this was fairly weird, and then I just went on to other sites. But somebody sent me a message saying, you really need to look into this. I think this is right up your alley. And they mentioned a controversy. Controversy? I really don't like sticking my nose into a controversy. Well, let's take a look. Now, this is Vincennes, Indiana. And this is called Sugarloaf Mound. And we are just going to go down and take a peek at it. And I looked at this about three or four weeks ago, and I thought this was pretty weird. I didn't think there was anything strange about it. Obviously, an ancient sacred mound type structure that we have been looking at for a long time. Right in the middle of a neighborhood. That was pretty strange. This is called Sugarloaf Mound. I had one message saying, hey, look into Sugarloaf Mound. And just like Battle Mound, there are a few different mounds named battle mound well sugarloaf mound you can find sugarloaf mounds in indiana michigan minnesota missouri just to name a few places there are mounds with the same name now here is a website historic vincennes indiana knox county indiana sugarloaf mound is a natural landform but was used by woodland era native americans as a burial mound huh but what do the historians in the region call this? They call it a Lois Hill. I think that is how you pronounce it. And it says the Lois Hills are a formation of wind deposited Lois soil in the westernmost part of U.S. states of Iowa and Missouri along the Missouri River. And these are the Lois Hills. And I think that's how it is pronounced. And this is what they look like. They are windswept deposits. They say this burial mound, this man-made burial mound, is a naturally made mound by windswept soil deposits. That's their story. But I just want to play you just a small clip from this video here, Secret Pyramids and Mounds of the Native Americans, and I will leave this link below. But this talks just briefly about Sugarloaf Mound. Sugarloaf Mound is a natural formation uh, produced by wind picking up sand along the river bottoms and coming up the side of the bluff that it stands on and then depositing it. So it's like a large sand dune that's been stabilized. What else is interesting is what they found is bones about nine feet deep and not just one but several. This is a huge burial mound of the uh, woodland Indians and this was ranging about 900 AD. So this entire area of what we're standing on is one big burial mound. So I'm sure many of you can think of my thoughts as far as this being a natural windswept hill. So what I did this morning, I called Vincennes, Indiana, and I had a conversation with Richard Day, the local historian, who just recently retired, and congratulations to Richard. He listened to a few of my <laughs> rather pointed statements at the beginning of the conversation, and then we talked maybe for 20 minutes, had a real good talk. I learned a lot talking to him, and he just told me why they think this is a natural windswept mound. And I really appreciate Richard Day talking to me and putting up with a few of my opinionated statements at the beginning of the conversation. And he seems like a really nice guy. And I just want to thank Richard for talking to me this morning. And I guess we can just agree to disagree. But Richard Day explained to me why he thinks this is a naturally occurring hill. I disagree with it just because it seems to have every indication of maybe a 2,000 year old burial mound. It looks exactly like the one in Miamisburg. I will show that here in a second. But everything that I have looked into on this site, to me, it says it's an artificially made sacred burial mound. 
Now, Mr. Day referred to a report that was done in the 1990s, the late 1990s, and I will leave that report below. I'm not going to go into it, but why they think this is a naturally occurring hill. They say the same sediments make up this mound that make up other natural mounds. Well, there's a lot of different material in these ancient mounds, and they build them the same way. So I can see where there's confusion there. But my initial impression of this place was, well, that looks certainly identical to the Miamisburg Mound in appearance and dimensions. And remember, if you have been following my series, these are built at high elevations where they can be seen from the territory all around. Well, let's go back over to Google Earth. Here is the Wabash River. And there's that little bend here, and this is where the current city of Vincennes is. And about a mile and a half from the river, on an elevated piece of property, and even people documenting the site in the 1800s said this can be seen from the territory and the river in all directions. This was up on an elevated piece of property, and this is what it looks like today. Now here is the road coming up to Sugarloaf Mound, and you can tell this rises up quite a bit in elevation. This is up on a perch. I'm going to leave a link for a video that a guy did on this site, and he even mentions the same thing here, that under the ground here, this was originally described as 300 feet long. They said it looked like something coming from the Aztecs, a flat top pyramid. It was associated with the mound builders in, in initial reports, said it looked like other Adena sites from across the country, and I totally agree. Now, early reports of this site and drawings of this site, here is what was documented. This is a drawing with a man standing on top, and they said there was an area up here cleared that was flat, and that comes from a long time ago. That wasn't recent. Here is one of the earliest picks I guess we have, and this clearly states this comes from the early 1900s. Sugarloaf Mound built by prehistoric mound builders, Vincennes, Indiana, and that was the standard line on this place. This was a prehistoric mound built by an ancient civilization, and then it all turned in the late 1900s. But fairly non-intrusive excavations were done in here, and at about eight or nine feet down, there were bones found, and that's exactly like it was, if you remember how I described my Miamisburg excavation work that was done there, found at the same depth. I believe these are the same structures built by the same people. But what happened to some of these things that were found here a long time ago in excavations? Well. Mr. Day explained to me that I believe they were given to the governor around 100 years ago, and where they are today is kind of a mystery. Now, if you go to Wikipedia on this site, it describes it as Pyramid Mound, and I guess there are two locations. There is another site described as Pyramid Mound, and it is also described as Lower Sugarloaf Mound, but they are two different sites, and this is just kind of adds a little bit to the confusion. But it says, the survey conducted by Illinois State Museum in the early 1960s demonstrate that the region surrounding Vincennes was the homeland of a Mississippian group of people at, known as the Vincennes culture. So we have a lot of different names. It says, based upon the published results of the 1874 Smithsonian survey, an amateur antiquarian writing in the 1890s remarked on the relationship of Pyramid Mound to larger archaeological sites in the East Central United States. Besides proposing that it was related to large geometric earthworks that the Hopewell built in Ohio, he suggested that the pyramid and several other mounds near Vincennes marked the northeastern boundary of a confederacy that was centered at the Mississippian city of Cahokia near St. Louis. It says later archaeological work conducted by professionals in the late 20th century has largely discounted earlier conclusions. Accounts published in the 1970s and 1998 concluded that pyramid and comparable sites nearby were actually natural Los Hills that the Indians of the woodland period chose to use 
as cemeteries. But I don't think prevailing winds could shape river silt a mile and a half from the river into a perfect conical earthen pyramid. Do we have any geologists that can comment on the possibility of this? I would really appreciate it. They're called Lois Hills, if you want to look into that. But I will try to leave those links of those reports saying it's a natural hill. This is a paper written in 1935, Observation of Catherine Minah, Fieldworker, Federal Writers Project. And it says, to reach Sugarloaf Mound, travel eastward out of Vincennes on Wabash Avenue. The mound is located about 50 feet from this road. And it just goes into some early history. It says, the Sugarloaf Mound is an excellent specimen of the mound builder's art and industry, one of a series of four grouped in a semicircle to the east and south of the city. These mounds, which are of the conical type, are among the largest in the state. Archaeologists have concluded that the mound builders were not of a different race from the Indians, but that all were descendants, all were descended from a common stock which migrated into America from Asia by way of the Bering Strait. Different environments produce degrees of culture as varied as those of the Pueblo Plains and Woodland Indians of North America, the Aztecs and Mayans of Mexico, the Incans of South America, and the savage tribes of the Amazon. It says among the mound builders themselves the cultures range from that of the Indians whose only weapons and implements were of stone and bones to that of producers of pottery, stone carvings, metalwork, weaving showing high degree of art as well as manual skill. The mounds themselves were apparently used for ceremony and burial purposes. The builders living in adjacent villages those around here have yielded specimens of pottery as well as skeletons, although they may not have been systematically worked. In 1933, the Old Post Association acquired the Sugarloaf Mound by purchase, thus assuring its preservation. It says, parking space has been provided and a walkway constructed leading up to the top, from which may be gained a wonderful view of Vincennes and the surrounding territory. But obviously from that report, it's a mound builder construction. It has wonderful views of the whole area, just like all these other sites that were constructed by an ancient civilization that we really can't put our finger on. But from early reports and what was found and where this place is located and what it looks like, it seems to be similar to these ancient structures that were built by an ancient culture and then the history seems to kind of flip. About 20 years ago, we had a report coming out that seemed to, at least in the eyes of these people here, seemed to debunk the theory that this was a mound builder's burial mound that was artificially constructed. So I'm sure people are going to comment on this video. We have early reports that this was an important landmark when people were traveling through this area 100, 200 years ago, 300 years ago. You're going to find this pretty amazing, I think. I have had some messages. Hey, you should do a video about the house built into Sugarloaf Mound. Well, there's more than one. Let's fly over to St. Louis, Missouri real quick. Now, here we are down at 4, 420 Ohio Avenue. And I guess I'll always remember that address after my mound builders pipe effigy video but here is sugarloaf mound the only remaining mound in st louis missouri house built right into it so not only do we have multiple sugarloaf mounds we have more than one sugarloaf mound with a house built into it when you state sugarloaf mound house built into it you got to specify which one it is early reports had this definitely a mound builder site people today say it's a naturally occurring hill. I would love to hear some comments on this one. But they say it's a natural formed hill used as a burial site about a thousand years ago. This is a confusing one. I would really appreciate comments and I'm sure people will comment away on this video. Is it a mound builder's artificially built structure or is it 
a wind-swept, naturally occurring hill. Hope you thought that was interesting, and you all have a very nice day.